G'day, Paul from Small Crown Productions. Welcome to day five of the 100 Days of Shakespeare event. Today, I am very pleased to be interviewing Carolina Furman, the brainchild behind the 100 Days of Shakespeare event. I was able to jump on a Zoom call with her and ask a few questions just to get her mindset around why she started this event and what she's hoping to get out of it and what she hopes other people will get out of it as well. She mentions the SCA, the Society for Creative Anachronism. I mentioned them in a little bit more detail in day one. So I will link up in the show card and also in the description below to my day one contribution for the 100 Days of Shakespeare. We can go through the timestamps and have a look at the SCA and learn a little bit more about them. I will also drop a link to the Kingdom of Lockhart website in the description below. The Kingdom of Lockhart is made up by the countries of Australia, New Zealand, and technically Antarctica. So uh, all you other kingdoms can take your flags and go home. We own it. Um, Australia, New Zealand, and Antarctica make up the Kingdom of Lockhart in the Worldwide Society, the Society for Creative Anachronism, which is a medieval society that has spread worldwide. So this interview, we dig into a little bit about what Carolina was hoping to achieve and uh, learn a little bit about how you can contribute as well. So see you on the other side. Carolina Furman, thanks so much for joining us here on your 100 Days of Shakespeare event. Yep, thank you for having me. Yeah, no worries. So first, I just want to just get a little bit of info. Tell us a little bit about yourself so people know who you are. Uh, so I never know how to answer these. And everyone's <laughs> like, what do you do? And I'm like, so um, I guess the, the obvious sort of cliched answer is to say what I, I do for a living which has nothing to do with this whole event. Um, I'm a comms officer for a library association, but uh, I have a lot of uh, creative hobbies. So I'm in a society for creative anachronism and I do performance um, stuff through the SCA. Um, but also in my private life, I do um, improv and I'm in a D&D podcast and uh, I occasionally do like stand-up comedy and like weird performances and stuff. I just like performing and having fun and like, having a go with things, but not taking it too seriously. Um, yeah. Cool. Tell me about the D&D podcast. What's that called? Uh, so it's called Cerelia. Okay. Uh, it hasn't actually come out yet. It's um, being recorded with me and a bunch of mates as part of an improv troupe called Troubadours. Awesome. So it's me and uh, season one has three characters and season four has four characters. Um, so yeah, working on that at the moment, which is fun. That's cool. So how many episodes have you guys recorded so far? Uh, well, we, we finished season one, which I, I, I can't remember how many episodes it ended up being because I don't edit any of it. And we recorded two episodes of season two, but um, it's just been uh irritating the beginning of this year to record episodes because people are away or they have to be in self-isolation because yeah. they came back from western australia and all sorts of stuff so when are you hoping for that to come out uh so the dm damien has been um doing all of the editing and everything so i guess it'll come out when whenever it comes decides out that it, when, it, when it comes out basically how long have you been doing improv uh three years this year awesome what do you love about that i like the the fact that i can i can just be really spontaneous and it's i feel like there's a lot of trust when it comes to improv because yep. you'll go into a situation and um you don't have to have a big plan or a big okay so i'm a doctor and i'm in the middle of an er and i have to save this person's life you go out and you're like i'm just gonna do I'm just going to sit down or I'm going to pretend like I'm hanging up washing and someone else will tell me what I'm doing and then we'll build a story together. And I really like that because I feel very supported. Mm, brilliant. Yeah. It's one of the things I love about improv too, is that that idea that a it's completely spontaneous. There is no plan. I love that. I'm a massive fan of that. And I love the fact that it really does rely on you as actors working together to build something cohesively I, uh, it's great it's one of my favorite things to do so that's awesome i love yeah. it 
so and when it works it 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 feels like you've planned the whole thing people are like oh did oh. you practice for ages like now nah, just made up yeah yeah it can be just amazing so i'm actually working on a project around improv at the moment so hoping to see that come to life a little bit later this year so it should be fun oh, fingers crossed mm, i'm hoping we can kind of get it all pulled together so that should be good so 100 days of shakespeare why <laughs> what inspired that idea um so there's a bit of backstory to it um do you know the youtuber cgp gray i do not yeah he's he's a youtuber he does very good stuff but very erratically because he's a perfectionist and he has a youtube series and a podcast which is like a hundred or something days on hiatus at the moment but he has a theory about new year's resolutions mm -hmm. so if you have a new year's resolution and it's i'm going to lose weight or i'm going to learn french or go on runs every morning it's a lose win situation and then it's really easy to get out of the habit of doing something feel like you failed and then give up yep so he supports the idea of having a theme year oh. so you might have your theme year as this is my year of connection i'm really gonna try and spend more time with my friends and family and meet new people and really like focus on on making those connections you might go this is my year of health i'm gonna regularly go on runs and eat healthier food and go to the doctor when i feel sick instead of putting it off so my theme for this year was a theme of learning brilliant so as part of that, I've enrolled in my master's, I've been doing dance classes, I've been going to the improv drop-in classes. Um, and um, I was talking to Mistress Tig, who's my yep. um, Laurel. Oh, okay, about, cool. Yeah, I'm her apprentice, about what I can do to focus myself more in the things I'm interested in the society, which is performance arts. And we sort of came to the conclusion that having a continuous, uh, like deep dive study of the work of Shakespeare and the time that he wrote in and his contemporaries would be a really good way to sort of focus that because it's something I'm really interested in as well. Um, so yeah, it's kind of where it came from. Love it. And 100 uh, days just sounds good, like 87 does. days of Shakespeare. It sounds a bit terrible, doesn't... but 100 days <laughs> sounds good. 87 um, days doesn't quite have the same ring. Yeah. And I picked the days from the 2nd of February to the 13th of May because the 13th of May is my birthday. Uh, I was so... wondering why the dates were set that way. Because I'm yeah, like, so... it's day five, but it's the 6th of February and it's messing with my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the idea is that if I get, when I, when I get to that 100 days, I get to reward myself by buying myself on something for birthday. my birthday that's either about Shakespeare or if I'm sick of it, something that's not about Shakespeare. So Love it. <laughs> that's why they have the weird dates. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I, I think that's fantastic. I love that idea of setting yourself a theme for the year. I'm not a massive fan of um, news resolutions. I, I, I see so many people set these you know, pseudo goals and fail. Like you've said, you know, I think that's so common. And so I'm just a fan of moving forward, just constantly moving forward, constantly aiming to better myself and, and improve the things that I'm working on. So uh, I think the idea of a theme like that's a great idea that you can chip away at it over the course of a year and, and make that a focus. That's, that's a great, great concept. So, and that was CPG Gray, was it? Yeah. Okay. I'll definitely check him out. Awesome. Well, I think it's an ambitious goal, 100 days of Shakespeare. So what are you hoping for yourself? What, what are the things that you're doing to, to live that for the next 100 days? So um, before I started doing it, I wrote up a Word doc of all of the various different things that I could do or um, research or listening to because I know there are some days where I will go straight from work to a dance class and then dinner with my sister and I won't have time to like sit down and read something so having a, like a podcast that I can listen to in my car or while I'm at work or even say okay today I'm going to watch 
uh, an adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. And that will be my study for today. So I, I, wanna, I still want to keep it fun. Mm. I don't want to... I think the, the thing that I have with the SCA and I have with this is you take it seriously enough that it's not a joke, but not so seriously that it's a chore. Love that. Love and I didn't want to... I didn't want to feel like I was back at school and yeah. I was, I was studying for a test. Like I'm doing this because this is something that I love and I'm very interested in. Um, and so if some days I have the energy to read half a book, then I have that energy. And if I only have the energy to listen to an episode of a podcast while I'm driving home, then, then that's all I have energy for. But it's the idea of continuous um, small learning rather than yeah. saying I'm going to, it's the difference between cleaning your house every day for 10 minutes and deciding you're going to clean the whole house on Saturday. It's yeah. just better for you. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic idea. And I love what I really liked about this when I saw you um, put the event out was that it was super chilled, really relaxed at your own pace. As much as you have time or effort to give, there is no other expectation. It is 100% on the person choosing to do as much or as little as they want, which I think is great because, you know, I, I've taken up the mantle. I think it's an exciting challenge. I love Shakespeare, so I'm really keen. And I'm hoping I can do something every day for 100 days, but I don't know that I'll be able to because of things like work. But, you know, and to not have the guilt associated with that outcome, I think is fantastic. And I think setting it out like that and making it small bite-sized chunks it's genius. I think it's a really great idea. So kudos to you Thank for you. that. Yeah, I think, I think it's great. And it makes it achievable. You know, I think that's the whole thing is, you know, setting a big goal can feel overwhelming. But when the goal is just to do a little bit every day, then that's way more achievable. And, and it doesn't matter how little that is. It might be that I pick up and read a sonnet today. That could be it. Or, yeah. or whatever quote two lines from a play i mean that's that's something i've acknowledged shakespeare for the day in the course of that so no, i think it's fantastic i think it's a great idea so yeah tip my hat my colloquial hat well done it's a Thank great you. idea so what is it about shakespeare that you love what do you love about the whole bard thing well i think the thing i particularly like about shakespeare is how other people take what he has created and make something new out of it so that's why in the google doc that i made i had adaptations of it so mm. if like she's the man which yep. i don't know if you've seen that film i love that film it's brilliant or um uh 10 things i hate about you yep. the fact that they have taken these or clueless like they've taken these base ideas and they've gone we're going to take that and we're going to move it to something else yeah and i think the more you learn about shakespeare um the more demystified he gets so if you go oh he was a genius and he wrote all these books all these plays and independently and there was no um like he was he was just a genius well he he did we wouldn't call it that that he wouldn't have called it that then but he did plagiarize huge parts of his plays but it's the way he plagiarized it that, that's kind of what makes it special so trying to understand that is really intriguing to me and and um the fact that they have such this such a wide audience and such wide appeal is really appealing to me and so it's 100 days of shakespeare but i'm also making time to read about his contemporaries and other people who are at the time and why he did things the way he did and trying to understand why he was so um, long lasting and why he had that level of financial security and societal security that not necessarily all of his contemporaries uh, enjoyed. Yeah. And um, so part of what I'm doing for it, and I don't expect anyone else to do it, is after I do anything related to Shakespeare, I'll note it on the Facebook group and then do a write up in a Google doc about what I learned about it and everything. Um, one of my good friends and a coworker of mine works in the PD learning area at my work. And she, she is always talking about, if you learn something, you have to reflect on it mm. and state 
how this knowledge is or isn't going to change your actions moving forward. Otherwise, you haven't really absorbed it. So that's been particularly helpful for me. But even reading about it and or learning more about Shakespeare, you learn more about the uh, atmosphere at the time. So one of the podcasts I listened to yesterday was about one of his contemporaries, Emilia Bassano, who is thought to possibly have been the uh, inspiration for the Dark Lady in his sonnets. But she was basically ignored for a really long time after her, after her death. And then only people started talking about her again because she had a loose connection to Shakespeare because she was the mistress of the Lord Chamberlain was his patron his second patron um but all of the information about her was skewed by this pseudo doctor that she knew who lambasted her because she wouldn't sleep with him <sighs> and it just makes me so angry and like she's been dead for 300 years not three, but she's been dead for a while now and i'm i'm real bad on her behalf i'm like how dare you you wrote this great po- book of poetry and you've been completely ignored because you're a lady. And I'm like, I got to find that poetry and read it. But, but if I hadn't done, if I hadn't started doing this learning, I wouldn't have found out about her. Yep. So I guess I like Shakespeare for Shakespeare, but I also like him for how I can access other information and kind of, I don't want to put him in a position of, oh, he was this amazing genius who just knew all of these things. I'm like, no, he was operating in a time with information and advantages that other people didn't have and you have to put that in perspective and here are some other people who were equally good but have been ignored because of the way our society works that was a really long answer i'm sorry no that was fantastic that's so good like you've just made me write some things down that i want to go and look at now which is awesome and i guess that's the whole point of this process it's just that that ability to share learning um i'm gonna i'm gonna invite you to come back towards the later end of the hundred days and do another interview if you're up for it. You don't have to decide now, but I'd love to get you to come back and get you to share maybe the top five most interesting things that you think you learned over the process. Because just hearing that, I mean, I knew a little bit about the lady that you're referring to, but I didn't know some of what you've just mentioned. So I think that would be really interesting to come back and reflect on in that way as well and share some of that information if you're up for it. So ponder that. Um, Yep. And we'll talk about it later. (laughs) So, yeah, I think that's a really key point too, is there is this sense of, you know, mystery and and genius around Shakespeare. And I think that ability to demystify that and realize that he was just a working writer making a living. You know, when you look at some of the accounts of some of the plays that he wrote and uh, I mean, the episode I did yesterday was actually about some of the sources that he used in his writing and uh, you know, Romeo and Juliet is his rewrite version of another play called Romeus and Juliet. You know, it's, it, it's, it's just what we do it today. We exactly what you said about taking that Shakespeare's work and translating that into something for the current modern day person. Shakespeare was doing that. So was his contemporaries. You know, I don't know how many different versions of um, um, Faustus there are. There's, there's heaps of versions of Faustus written you know, over the the course of the histories, um, which is just another one that is a very popular story. So yeah, yeah, I think it's a really great point. So plays, question for you. Do you have a favourite? It's pretty basic, but Midsummer Night's Dream. Yep, why is that? Just, I like how silly it is and I like how confusing it is. And I like how so many people have taken it and they've, done lots of because it they, they goes through waves of, of how people do put on performances of Shakespeare's plays and Midsummer Night's Dream is one of the most dynamic so you have performances of people are just really really stripped back and it's only got the cast and a few props and you have ones where the the set designers have just gone wild have been like we're going to have live rabbits on the stage and we are not going to worry about the implications of that and I just <laughs> I just really love that and I and there's a, a version of Midsummer Night's Dream on YouTube that was done by a college production in the early 2000s, where it's all set in a coffee shop, 
and Puck gets oh. around entirely on roller skates. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, uh, it's just float. It's. I'll see if I can find it. I'll yeah, send it to I was you just going to say, if it. you can find the link, I'll drop it in the description. So that'll be interesting for people to see because I, I definitely, you can just see that. But it, it's one of the plays that I think has the largest adaptability. And I really like the play within a play at the end. The mechanicals, yeah. Yeah, it's, so it's just it's just fun. Yeah. And it's one of the the, the, the comedies that is the, it's one of the less problematic ones. Like it's still problematic, but it's one of the ones where they don't actively like, like the, the core jokes aren't about making fun of Jewish people, you know? Yeah. Which yeah. is hard <laughs> to laugh yeah. at now. Yeah. Oh, look, you know, it was written for its time and there is, you know, you look at something like the taming of the shrew as well and the way that um, Petruchio, you know, treats um, Katarina and um, you know, I, it's tough. Really uncomfortable. Yeah, some of that stuff in there that you look at and you go, it was, it was right for the time. Or it was, it was current at the time, but you know, it's it was it's seen hard as acceptable, to, but not now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know, and that's that's culture changing, which you know, it's great and it should. All right. So, have what's your favorite production you've ever seen? Favorite Shakespeare production you've ever seen? So, um, like in person or like a yeah. recording. In person, I've only ever actually seen three Shakespeare cool. plays in person. So it was in 2017, 2018, when the Globe Theatre came to Sydney. <gasps> and me and a few of my friends went up and we saw three plays in one weekend. Yes. Because we couldn't get any other time off work. So we went and saw Midsummer Night's Dream, Macbeth, and the one... I can't, I can never remember the name of it. The one with the twins. As you and like. there's, yes. Um, and it's, again, it's really basic, but I really like the, the, the rendition of Midsummer Night's Dream because of one specific part. So we were all groundlings because it was the cheapest option. And we were right at the front. And it was, the, it was at the end with the play within the play with the mechanicals where... Um, they're committing where they're um, killing themselves out of love and there was a posh looking man in his 50s right at the very front wearing what looked like incredibly expensive completely white clothing with like little upside down crosses all the way down his pants and he looked really fancy and there was this moment where the I can't remember her name but the, the, the female character kills herself and there was a lot of fake blood and she was looking around at where she could do the most damage saw this man oh, and smiled no. and just covered him in fake blood just like absolutely covered him and that moment of her like looking around seeing this man and going excellent I'm gonna him up was beautiful it was just inspirational and then he had to stand there for the rest of the play there wasn't much left but like another like 10 15 minutes during like bows and the musical dancing scene just covered in blood and it was beautiful and it made me so happy and also like why would you go as a, a ground like, be right at the that. front like there are signs <laughs> everywhere mate what are you doing like he didn't complain anything but he did not look happy uh, that's brilliant yeah that's fantastic yeah i agree why white as a groundling bad call so final question what are you hoping that um people get out of the 100 days of shakespeare event um i'm hoping that they just learn something it doesn't have to be a huge epiphany or um anything like difficult but if they just go and listen to a podcast or read a book or watch a movie and they go oh I didn't know xyz and they have that moment but they've learned one new thing or selfishly I'm hoping that someone other than me and possibly take reads the um reflections I've been doing because I'm gonna tidy it all up at the end and write something for cockatrice probably great and reads that and goes oh okay cool that's actually useful information but I I hope people have like a bit of fun with it and go well 
this wasn't particularly hard or that looked interesting like if if people after the 100 days are over or midway through because i'm happy for people to to drop in and and lurk and do stuff at any at any point along i'm not going to be hard-lined about it yeah but if they get to the end and they're like oh that was really cool we should we should do another or we should do one about ben johnson's work or about mm-hmm. um marlo or about you know someone else that would be really cool but i don't cool. have the the goal for me personally is because initially i was just going to do it as a private thing just for me but then i went oh it'd be cool if other people engaged and then we could have like mini conversations or put in like a little mini performance at the end that would be cool um but yeah as long if if someone learns something i will be awesome happy. brilliant i love it i think it's such a great idea so there we have it get involved at your own pace join the facebook group which i will link in the description below and uh have a bit of fun learning a bit about shakespeare i think it's a great event so congratulations for pulling it together um you know i think it's an opportunity too with particularly the resources that you're pulling together from what you learn and creating that as an open doc in the group it's a fantastic place for people to come and learn more for themselves even from the research that you know you tig myself whatever are doing across the 100 days so wonderful resource for the future as well so love it congratulations thanks for joining me thanks for chatting thank you yeah it was a little good pleasure i'll talk to you soon cheers all right that's it thanks so much for joining me in this chat with carolina Furman. if you are interested in participating in the 100 days of shakespeare event please use the link in the description below to join the facebook group where you can share your knowledge and expertise or learn from others who are sharing over there as well i think this is going to become quite an amazing resource for anybody interested in shakespeare so head on over there and become a part of the group. If you got anything out of this video, it would be amazing if you could give it a like and of course subscribe to the channel where you will find other discussions around Shakespeare, entertainment, and of course, entertaining things for your family. So have a look around the channel, encourage you to see one of these other videos around the 100 Days of Shakespeare event, and I will see you on the next one.